Greetings everybody. Welcome once again to our 10 days of prayer devotional segment. Mm -hmm. Pastor Henry, how are you doing man? I'm very great. Yeah. yeah I'm enjoying what uh, the Lord is doing to me and for me. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, sometimes the year gets so busy that uh, we forget to pray man. And I think this is a good way to kickstart 2018. What do you think? There's no better way. Yeah. No better way. Uh, because I like this quotation from an author of mine, and yes. he says, the men of prayer are the men of power. Oh, I like that. But of course, like that. men is being used in a generic sense, of course. it includes all people. Of course, yes. of course. And that's what we are uh, trying to encourage everybody to do. Uh, no matter what the theme is each day, you are being encouraged to pray, you are being encouraged to uh, spend time with your family, with your brothers and sisters, just having an upper room experience Amen. yeah Amen. what's the topic today pastor to they were pray what's the topic they today? were looking at bare feet that's interesting yes that is interesting i think we can pray right there yes. and we'll discuss what bare feet is about sure, sure, sure. all right please go ahead and pray for us heavenly father thank you that we have this opportunity to talk about your word yes this is not just a newspaper ad or some nice jingle or it's a nice slogan somewhere. Right. This is the Word of God, the creative Word of God that changes and transforms lives. Yes. We pray, Lord, that through the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, you may transform us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Uh, do you mind reading for us the passage of Scripture? And then you go ahead and tell us the context of the story. All right, sure. All right. No problem. All right. In uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 5, this is where a key text is found. Right. And uh, the text uh, says, take off, take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. All right. Moses is busy doing his usual business, right. sheep uh, tending. Yeah. And uh, he was a shepherd. Right. And he looks in the distance and he sees fire. Yeah. And he gets curious to figure out what is going on. Right. And he climbs up the mountain, and, and as he approaches this place, he right. hears a voice that says, Take off your yeah. shoes. Yeah. For the place where you're standing is holy ground. Okay. The particular context is Moses has been out of Egypt for about 40 years. Mm -hmm. He's been living the life of a nomad, if I was to put it in that, in that particular uh, sense. Right. And God has a message for him. Right. But before he can hear the message, he has to recognize that the place where he was standing mm -hmm. was holy. God is already given him a picture of who he is. I like that. And uh, we can make a connection with yesterday's theme. That's right. And that is the holiness of the Lord. That's right. Now, what is it? Yesterday the focus was God, right? And His holiness. But today the focus is on us. What is the context of Him taking off His shoes? Why did God ask Him to take off the shoes? And what did it mean to Him as a person to do that? Well, um, it's also a question that I have had. Why yeah. did God ask yeah. him to take off the shoes? Yeah. Um, but I think you know, in 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 a lot of a lot of a lot of ways, yeah. Um, God will do something to arrest the attention of the of the particular person. Right. I think of um, um, he in Asia. Right. When we enter homes. Oh yeah. We oh, take yeah. off our shoes. That's right. Yeah. Back in Africa, we don't do that. No, man, we just do walk in there. Yeah, we walk, walk in. in. But I think the sense of uh, the Asian culture, if, yeah. I, if I was to say, yeah. is you're in my house. Exactly. Respect my house. Yeah. I want my house clean. Yeah. So you are showing honor to that right. particular individual. And right. I think this is the sense which uh, God wanted to captivate the mind of, of Moses. All right. Let's introduce another word I believe is related to honor. And we'll do it by looking at the statement. Um, uh, by the way, for those of you who are doing the 10 days of prayer, if you go to the Seven Day Adventist website, uh, you will find the material for the 10 days of prayer. And what we are discussing now is almost related. Yes. Right? It's, it's very related to but the expanded, the material, expanded if you expanded, will, if yes. you will yes. discussion format yes. and stuff like that. But if you want the entire uh, discussion points, you can get them there. And this is where I'm reading from uh, right now. I'm going to read the very first uh, quotation up there. It says, Humility and reverence should characterize the deportment of all who come into the presence of God. You mentioned the word honor, right? And it was also a way of Moses 
being humble before God. That's right. So now my question to you, Pastor, is how can humility contribute to unity in God's church? Oh, yes. Um, a lot of times, Paul harp on this issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and humility was to be expressed in many different ways. Right. right. Sometimes humility was going to be expressed in you honoring the gift. Right. Of somebody else. Right. You and myself, Pastor, we preach. Right. We have different preaching styles. Right. Right? Right. But we preach. And in humility, I can say, man, Pastor Samson, that's a powerful preacher. Exactly. And, and I mean, I'm not, not exactly powerful preacher. No, no, exactly. The statement. Yes, exactly. Yeah. No, it is yeah. the truth. He's a yeah. powerful preacher. Somebody out there say amen. Yeah? But this is... This is the way it has to be. Oh, oh sister, so on, so man, she can say powerful things. That's right. And sometimes I've had the, the uh, church members come to me, right. tell me, you know, Pastor, I appreciate it when you preach more than yes. somebody else. Exactly. And you know that what? Happens, man. And you know what? The temptation is to say, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, you know, yeah, I wish I should be preaching all the time. Yeah. And sometimes you 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 are you are not aware that you're actually being being proud, prideful. And oftentimes it has been my practice when somebody tells me that I say, "Well, God bless you, uh, brother," but I would always point them to the yes. other person. Yes. So, uh, and and that's one element. That's right. If you allow me, uh, another element okay. would be okay. to not think that your opinion is always correct. Yeah. And and that's why Paul says, "Think of others." Think of their things, not only yours. You understand? So that's why you know the church is very beautiful that we have uh, a system yeah. that we we function in a in a in a committee type of system. Yeah. People bring in their opinions, discuss them, right. and if your opinion is not voted, it doesn't mean that they hate it. It's just that people don't think maybe at that particular time that's the way it should be followed. Yeah. And so humility can be expressed in, in many ways, but I think these are uh, yeah. some of the two critical ways in which we need to show humility. That's very significant, Pastor, and uh, thank you for the <clears throat> for the thought, because I really believe that the key uh, to unity, apart from the fact that the major theme is Christ, if we all look to Christ, if we're guided by the Holy Spirit, but the one thing we can do is to have a humble spirit, right? Uh, humility not only should be expressed in our relationship with God, but yes, towards each other as that's well. Right, that's right. Because even though we're pastors, yes. that doesn't mean we know everything. That's right. right? That's important. Uh, man, I remember uh, before I got married and people would come for advice. I would remind them that, hey, look, in my four years in college, <laughs> I wasn't studying on marriage. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's right. Just because I can explain the Bible doesn't mean I know what's going on in your house. That's right. Okay? That's right. We all need God's guidance mm -hmm. at the end of the day. That's so right. even as men of God, we or to exhibit right. the qualities of humility. That's right. Yeah? yeah. And what do you think about it? If um, we as pastors, leadership in the church, if we are humble, do you think it will affect the members? You know, Pastor, I have a belief. Yeah. The church will rise and fall based upon the leadership of the pastor yeah. or its leaders. That's right. If you want the church to go higher in their in their experience, right. right. You must set the, 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 the pattern. Set the pattern. If you are humble, the church will be humble. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that it happens overnight, but it has to be something that is consistently so somewhere. Yes, so somewhere. exhibited. Yes, we always have to start somewhere. And maybe one or two, yeah. they catch it. Yeah. And then it can spread like wildfire all yeah. over all over the church. I like that. Again, I, I love to read these statements, man. I'm going to go to the to the last one. Sure. The North Pacific Union, Union Cleaner, mm -hmm. uh, March 23, 1910. Uh, if you look at the second sentence, oh, sure. he can, right? It says, he, spoken about the Lord, he can never use anyone who is seeking to humble someone else. Humble yourselves, brethren. Ish. Has to break it down, man. Ish. Break it down. Ish. I think Bible religion, and I, 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 I admit the, the quotation Bible religion. Yeah, no? yeah. God's view of what religion is supposed right. to be. That's right. It's always inward focus. Yeah. Do not take out the 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 the, the plank or I mean the, the little the speck, yeah. Yeah, the speck in somebody's eyes where there's a log in yours. Yeah. Paul says examine yourself. That's right. Well uh, it, it's interesting when Jesus is speaking to Peter in John chapter twenty one. Right. And telling him that look you're gonna uh, I know that you you fell by the way but I know that you love me right. and your future you're gonna die for me 
And somehow, John, the beloved, is yes. close. Yes. And Peter says, Lord, what about him? Jesus yes. says, no, no. Leave him. It's not about him. It's not about him. Wait, you and me? Right. You and me are talking. Right. So I think that uh, that's the, 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 the point. Right. God wants us to allow the principles of the Bible yeah. to change us first before yeah. you can change somebody else. We say this, be the change you want to see. Right. Yeah. We, we forget, uh, I, I always hear people say to each other, to me or to someone else, brother, humble yourself. And yet, the words in the Bible are coming from God. That's right. You understand? That's it's right. God saying, you, human beings, yes. humble yourself. Right. So, like you said, if I, if, I, if I want to see humility in your life, I must exhibit it in mine. That's right. Right? Be the change you want to see. Exactly. Right? Yes. So, humility is something that should be personal. It should be a, an inward thing. Mm -hmm. So, don't pray for your husband to be humble. Don't pray for your wife to be humble. That's right. Don't pray for your boss or your workmates to be humble. Ask God to make you humble. Yeah. Because I think in becoming humble, you begin to see people differently. That's right. Right? That's right. Uh, and I think for a pastor, one of the things that uh, I've noticed is when humility is a part of my life, I definitely see everybody else as a candidate for heaven. That's right. But when I think I'm the man, yes. then I begin to decide, okay, you're going, you're not going, you're going, you're not going. That's a problem right That's there. Problem, yeah. Because the statement says, God cannot use somebody who humbles everybody else. That's right. All right. So tonight, uh, this day, Pastor is going to pray that God may humble us individually. Okay. I would love to pray for humility in your life, but I got to be selfish on this one and say, yes. Lord, humble me. And I want Him to do that for you as well. Pastor, pray for us, and then we'll we'll, we'll shut down this thing. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Moses was the meekest man who ever lived. Yes. At least that's what the Bible calls him as. Yes. But your Lord, he was not always humble. He was not always meek. Yeah. But Lord, you brought him to that place. And we know that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can make us truly humble. And that humble is not a certain posture or being quiet. Humble is, the humility is something that is inward, something that uh, uh, transforms the very essence of who we are. Yes. And so, Lord, we pray that you make us humble according to Jesus, uh, Jesus' pattern of humility. Yes. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, may God bless you, and we will see you guys tomorrow night. Please attend the hubs, invite your friends, invite your family. Let's worship God together in prayer. All right? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. I'll see you again tomorrow, man. See you then. All right.